This little box makes all the difference in the world. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Earlier this year, while I was at the Dayton Ham Fest, one of my patrons, Todd, walked up and handed me this little device. Now you're probably asking, what is it and why is it that big of a deal? Well, this is simply an HT battery. A very big HT battery, but an HT battery nonetheless. And this thing changed the way I used the Kenwood D75. But even if you're using another HT, stick around because you still may find this extremely interesting and it's available for more than just the D75. Now, after I got home from Dayton, I pretty much just laid that battery on the shelf and hadn't given it a whole lot of thought until we were getting ready to go to the Huntsville Ham Fest. And I knew while we were at the Huntsville Ham Fest, I was really going to use this D75. So I didn't want to have to worry about keeping batteries, two or three of them, with me as the day went by. And I decided to really battle test this particular battery here. Now, take a look at it. It does make the HT quite a bit larger. In fact, you need the included spacer with it to get the belt clip out so that it's still flush after you put on this aftermarket battery. Now this is made by W0 AEZ and I'm going to leave a link to it along with a coupon code where you can save 5% with code KM4ACK. But Huntsville gave me a perfect opportunity to really, really test this battery. And here's what I found out. I got up in the mornings, turned this on, turned on APRS, connect, well, actually I turned on KISS TNC, connected this to my phone and allowed my phone to do all of the beaconing. When I went to bed in the evenings, 16 hours later, you heard that right, 16 hours later, I still had juice in this battery, and that's with it beaconing APRS all day long and serving as my primary voice radio. Another nice feature is the USB port that's right on the bottom of the battery. So if I did want to take this off, put it on charge, I could grab another battery and put it on the radio. But honestly, unless you're going to be up around the clock, I don't think you're going to need any more than this battery. And as of the time of this recording, these things come in right around a hundred bucks. Now you might think that's expensive, but that's the exact same price as a regular battery for the Kenwood D75. Now, there are a couple of things to note if you're going to go with this battery. A, the charging ports on the side of the radio will not charge the battery. So you do need to use the USB-C port on the bottom in order to get it charged. But this thing includes a fast charger uh, giving you 15 watts of input from a regular USB-C charging brick. So it will charge fairly quick, even if you deplete it all the way down. Now, another thing to note has to do with this little orange O-ring that's on the back of the radio. I don't know how waterproof this battery is going to be. And really, none of them are waterproof, including the original. But uh, the original might give you a little bit more water resistance than this aftermarket battery. But those two things are the only things that I could say you need to be aware of if you're going to use this battery. As for me, well, I have permanently attached that spacer and I will now only run this aftermarket battery on the D75 because this thing changes the way I looked at this radio. No longer am I concerned that I'm going to run out of battery before I run out of day. Now, if you have one of the Yezu radios, the FT3 or the FT5, he also makes a battery pack for these two radios. And if I'm not mistaken, he's also recently come out one for the FT70 radio. So you can get these for a few different radios right now. And I'm willing to bet that Kevin already has in the works batteries for other radios out there on the market. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to leave us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.